Hi, fair warning, at the end of the video I'll be having some cake, so watch at your own risk. It's been a year that I created this channel, so why not celebrate a little? But before that, in this video I'll be making a motorized turntable, so that I could get cool shots of my future projects. But today, I'll be spinning my cake. So let's make it happen. I've already cut out all rough shapes from MDF, and once assembled the turntable will look much like this. But before I put everything together, I need to make room for the electronics. A DC motor, a speed control board, the potentiometer, the on-off switch, and the power connector. I'll start with the motor. First I'm drilling a hole to align the motor, which will help me to draw an accurate outline. Once that is done, I'm cutting along with a jigsaw to make a hole of a right size. It does not have to be perfect, but I like my electronics sitting snug in their compartments. To this end, I'm cutting out slightly different shapes on each layer. And if that was not enough, I need to cut part way into the MDF. A flat bit on my router is up for the task. The process looks like CNC milling, but costless. And the board fits nicely. Now. Since I have a router handy, I can tidy up the top plate. I will use this curved bit to run around the edge on both sides. Next, I need to find a way to couple the motor shaft to the top plate. To accomplish this, I will make a hole in the smaller disc. But there is a problem. The friction between the shaft and the disc will not be strong enough and while the motor spins, my cake will not. But I have a crude solution. The shaft has a flat section and I will hammer a staple on each side to shape my hole to match it. This will do the trick. With this out of the way, I can start accommodating the remaining bits. I have drawn the outlines, so just need to make the holes. A drill will work on the potentiometer and the power connector, but I will have to use my router again for the switch. A perfect fit. The wall the cutting complete, I can now try and make this aesthetically pleasing. I will start by forming and rounding the edges. This can be done with a sander in seconds. Working with MDF is really easy. A saw and some sandpaper is basically all you need. The next step is to paint the parts. But it's important to remember that MDF is basically a thick piece of paper. It will soak up loads of paint, bulge and break. MDF needs to be sealed with some primer or as I'm using here, some sealer. I'm applying a few coats, lightly sanding in between where I think it is needed. This is especially true for the edges. They cut really rough and moderate amount of sanding is required between coats to ensure plastic-like finish. This is what I mean. And I'm ready to paint. I chose spray paint for this project because I only have a handful of parts and I don't want to go through the effort of using any brushes or rollers to apply the paint and then tidy up afterwards. But anything would have worked. I went for white, as I wanted to emphasize whatever I put on this turntable and not draw attention away from it. Let's now get inside. I need to hook up the electronics. Links to all of the components can be found in the description below by the way. I've got to connect a power connector there is a switch which will control which way the motor turns. I have a high torque geared DC motor which will connect here. And there's a potentiometer already connected to the control board for changing the speed. Max rated speed of the motor by the way is 30 RPM. Now the board is much bigger than I thought it would be, so let's get rid of some of its parts. I certainly don't need any of the LEDs. You see these connectors? They're used to easily attach wires to the board. I can throw them away and solder the wires straight to the board. Finally, the heatsinks. The board is rated for 30 volts, which means that this 12 volt regulator is here just to make sure that the op-amp doesn't blow up. I will be using 12 volt supply, not 30, so the regulator will not even get warm. I can safely remove its heatsink. As for this transistor, again, I will be using less than half of the rated supply at probably around 10% of the speed, meaning one tenth of the average power. So it should be safe to assume that I don't need its heatsink either. Well, 
If all this catches on fire, well now I was wrong. Here, everything would have fit on a board half the size. Alright, let's connect everything together. I'm starting by soldering the switch, then the power connector, and finally the motor. And now for the best part, putting everything together. So far so good, everything is fitting nicely. I'm using a few small screws to hold the PCB in place. I don't want it to wobble when the motor is spinning. Initially, I was planning to glue the MDF layers together to make a uniform block, but later I decided to use screws to keep an option to swap around the motor for something faster or slower, or in case that transistor burns out after all. I'm tightening the potentiometer of the nut to stop it from moving and replacing its little cap. I've also got a nut for the power connector. Now I'm placing an aluminum piece, which I cut out off camera. Its primary purpose is to hold the motor body in place. The motor body came with some screw holes, which I will take advantage of here. Next, I will use this funny named Lazy Susan bearing. Look up what a Lazy Susan is if you're unsure. Anyway, the bearing will provide support for the top plate, so the motor will just have to turn it and not hold any weight. I'm using several washers to raise the bearing to prevent it from rubbing against the aluminum part, and I will secure it to the MDF with some more wood screws. But before I do that, I need to be absolutely certain that the motor shaft is centered. This is the most critical part of the project. If I get this wrong, the best case is the motor stalls and I can readjust. But the worst case, due to the high torque of the motor, it will rip the MDF at the screws or the shaft. Not to mention the tears. So this might take a while. Finally, I'm only left with adding the top plate, which I will screw to the outer ring of the bearing. Remember the small disc with two staples in it? I glued it to the top plate, so now the whole thing can just slide onto the motor shaft. And we're done. I just need to plug in a power adapter. turn it on. I thought it would be symbolic to spin my first ever YouTube project on this turntable. I'm sure you could find that video on my channel. What I like is that I can speed things up and bring the speed right down or even put it to a halt. What else can I put on this? A glass with shells in it, a vase from a gift shop in Crete, a Portuguese rooster, a mug, an app, a peach, an avocado, a half-eaten banana even though it's still green, Nutella, a pine cone, a smelly shoe, a less smelly shoe, soap for some reason, Teddy, toilet paper, actually, let's get back to the teddy. This fine specimen of a teddy will feature in one of my upcoming videos, so make sure to subscribe to be the first to know what beautiful or horrible fate awaits him. Anyway, where's my cake?
It's been a fun year, and I wanted to say thanks for your support. Every new subscriber or a positive comment makes my day, every time. So thank you. As for now, it's time to dig in. So as always, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Oh, wow.